Hey guys, um, I came home and it's, I was already going to do this message, but I came home tonight from work. Great day. Awesome things happened. And they're not all great. I mean, they're all great, but this was just a great day. You know, you know some of them are just okay. And some of them are like, man, kind of. Okay, yeah, even though it was the day that the Lord has made, I'm going to rejoice, and it was still kind of a tough day. There's just, you know, but this was a good day, great day. Everything just kind of flowed like it's supposed to. And I turned on my YouTube, and there was this video from, I forget the lady's name, and I apologize, ma'am, Spirit Move Ministry. Watch the video about fire coming. And that's where I'm at. Can you hear me now? That's what he's saying to the church. This whole coronavirus sham and mess, and the virus is not a sham. The deaths are not a sham. The people hurting and suffering are not a sham. It's the media and the government and the blind people behind it, the pharmaceuticals and the doctors and just all this twisted up stuff that we're supposed to believe. No. Because it's all about money, power, greed. The people that are driving it, they want the money, they want to make money off of all this medicines. The power is the government, the people in power and the government. Are you going to trust them, guys? The same people that locked you down and going to give you another $600 check and gave you $1,200 for five months of work? What, he made that same minimum. Give me a break. I don't want it anyhow. It's not. They're not my source. God is Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the Word. I don't take the check and run, but don't really want it because I know it's phony money. But anyhow, let's get back to this. The fire. The dream that I had. America was on fire. 100 foot tall flames, guys. I'll just give you a few points in it, but look at it. He gave me the date, 8 11 2020 to 9 11 2020. I added 8 19, 20, and 8 19 guys a year, and he wouldn't let me put it out till December of last year. So he told me to put it out. I wanted to put it out the very next day, but another highlight in it was the flames. They were red hot, they were white. At the bottom, red hot, red in the center, and like a dingy yellow. That, I don't know how else to explain it, but, and then I thought, well, that should be gold. But then the Lord said, no, it's bronze. And he broke it down. The white was the purification, the red was the blood of the Lamb, salvation, repentance, turning our lives over to Christ, and the yellow bronze, the refiner's fire that he's putting us through. <laughs> the revelation. And then this lady comes out with the very same thing, how it's a purging fire. That's what he told me. He said, it's, it's going to not destroy America, but it's going to bring us to its knees. And there's some, that's grace, and that's good. Honestly, it's good news. There's even better news in this. I'm going to get to it in a second. He's added to these dreams. Same dream. Dreamed it again. I saw people with wheelbarrows full of money, guys, that still had those, whatever the VA from the bank, those green things, you know, so a stack of $100 bills has a, whatever they bundle it in. You know, it came from the bank. You know, it was probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. They had wheelbarrows full of money. They were dumping it in the fire. Rolling it up and dumping it in the fire because it had no, and the Lord said, because it had no value. And he said, this is what he said. He said, just like in the days of Hitler, when they burned the Bibles and banned the books, what are they doing now? Burning Bibles. Word of God is no effect. Don't care about the flag. Me, me, me. You don't like having burn, burn, burn the town down and I want your house. 
Sorry, guys. I don't care. My, get or don't get. My house is irrelevant because you'll never get my house because it's the house that God built. Ain't, ain't for sale. Ain't, it ain't for your taking. But that's the, you know, it's like, man, so, but that's part, so everybody thinks we're in the fire, and we are, but this fire that's coming, guys, purred and purified us of the idols. And then this morning, this is the good news. I'm going to probably end it with this because I really want you to watch these. I was in prayer, and I started seeing this vision again of the dream. Which I'm kind of a combination of visions and dreams, but the dream and then the visions, and then it's just kind of all, they all start correlating together. <sighs> Actually, let me rephrase that because it was both. The visions were in the prayer, but I had this dream this morning. And in this dream, standing there talking to the Lord and we both looked at each other and said it at the same time could it be that we're the fire yes Joel's army coming forth it can be a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost not a movement not a revival you can take those out because it just becomes a man-made glorified thing seriously think about it an outpouring of the Spirit so that no man gets the glory no matter who, what ministry you're under or that your ministry name is the ministry itself. Look at them, guys. Uh, that coronavirus exposed all this mess. Why? We didn't have the power. It was there. We were disconnected. Not everybody, but the vast majority of the church still is some of them are trying to pop back up and crop back up under the same building with inferior materials their houses are built upon sand and when the storm comes there's going to be nothing to hold it up blown away by this storm and this outpouring that's coming and then i saw a combination of dreams and visions again the outpouring of the latter rain was what was going to stop the fire. But it wasn't going to stop the fire of us. What it was going to do was wash away the stuff that was burned and needed to be purged. The fire was still going to be there on top of the outpouring because we're the fire. We're that storm that's coming, guys. Got a video out about we're the storm. Lightning, lightning. When it hits something, it starts a forest fire, generally. I've had other dreams, visions, some of them are really old. How about that, guys? I'll, I'll, this short one, but because they're some of them are a little bit long and deep, and it's not that I not nothing to do with that. It's just that they're long, and you really gotta hear them to get the full context of them. Be more than happy to. You can email me at jesusislive at gmail .com and ask me different things. This one, I saw this firestorm, and it was natural, but yet it was not. It was in the spirit, and when it came to the edge of the woods, to the trees, from the other trees, the flames and fire were so hot that the things in front of it, the fire didn't even have to touch it. They just burst into flames from the heat. That happens in the natural. That's why the firefighters have such a hard time if the wind's blowing the wrong way and it's, the thing just boom, 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 self-ignites almost. And that's what's happening today. We got seven days, guys. I don't know what's gonna happen. I know some of it, not nearly all of it. I'm not trying to be something I'm not. I'm a watchman and I'm warning you guys. If you're in the world and of the world, it's not going to be good news. If 
you're in Christ, you're serving him, it's great news. It's good news. So that's the other part of this fire. It's going to be time to choose. There's no more fence. Try the fence. They're going to get burned out, guys. Honestly, they're going to go away. They're not going to be there. You know, no crutches, no nothing. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, is word or not. It's not some jailhouse salvation message. It's giving you time to get it right. To repent, all of us. And this is not you repent and I don't have to. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo. I do too, guys. Steve still needs to die out. In some areas, Steve's still on the side of Potter's wheel. Steve still needs some pruning, purging, purification. I like to think, no. In 90, well, whatever percent, pretty high, but not all the way. I have to, because I could miss, mismix my words because I'm in the ministry and be detrimental, even deadly to people. So it's like, man, God, I really, I do, I have to pray about everything I say and do I get it right all the time? No. Most of the time, yes. Way more than not. But it's been a 40 year journey too, guys. And it's not been easy. It's time, guys. I'm gonna grab this prop. Like that, that's that's the corona mask I wear. I don't wear one. I shop all over, all over. I'm not gonna tell you where because you'll send the corona police right behind me to get me and the shop owners. Kicked out of a few of them. Some of them I decide what I'm gonna do. I, you know, sometimes I stick one in my pocket, but I don't ever wear it. And sometimes I'll say them, sometimes I won't. I just try not to be in the flesh about it because because you know it kind of can ruffle our feathers pretty badly but most of the time I'll just say you know what I don't wear one and you know why because his name is Jesus and I don't need one and the blood of the lamb is sufficient I'm wearing my mask from my heart I'm not doing it to be you know make you sick or anything I'm still praying about it maybe it is stopping or slowing it down maybe I really doubt it, but with all this hype that's behind it, it's very hard to say okay when you know it's not okay and the real reason why they're pushing it. None of them wear it. Do you see Congress wearing it? Very rarely, you know, a few times on national TV, but most of the time, no. When they're sitting in Congress, no. When they're sitting next to each other, no. But you can't go to church. You can go to a football game, you can do all kinds of other stuff. You can go to basketball games now. If you're dumb enough to, honestly. Number and dumber. But that's all in the message. Guys, can you hear me now? Is what he's saying. So usually I have a lot of scriptures with it, but I'm going to end with this one because this lady had it in there from this ministry, Spirit Moves ministry. She had Malachi 3. 2, I think, was one of them. Read the whole of 3, though. But hers were good, too. Watch the video and listen to her scriptures and follow them with the message that she's got because she's on target and on theme, and I don't want to take from what the Lord has given her. I'm just want to add to it or be part of it or whatever, however you want to look at it. So we're both being part of the body of Christ. But it's the same theme. But then read 316 and 17. Even just read all three. 316, though, you can go back and look at another one of my messages. It's about a different dream. And I don't know why I'm bringing it up, but apparently I need to. In the dream, long story, but the Lord woke me up. I mean, I was asleep, and the Lord said, John 3.16, Colossians 3.16 was just as important with Scripture as John 3.16. I woke up and I had to read, read it, guys. And then a couple of days later, he said, pick a book, 3.16. Matthew 3.16 is about Jesus being baptized in the Spirit of the Lord rested upon him. 
Revelation 3.16, I would rather you be hot or cold than lukewarm because I'm spew you out of my mouth. They're very standalone, specific. You don't have to read the whole Bible or the whole chapter to, to get it. Malachi 3.16, a book of remembrance for those that fear the Lord. John, 1 John, read them, guys. I forget which one it is, but it's about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. It's a 316 one. I can't remember what book it is now, right now. But And they said to the king, we don't owe you an explanation, king, but we know God's able. Can you hear me now? More to this than that, but we're going to be that light and that fire, guys. <laughs> Got a book out that was wrote in 2015 about that. Just email me. Look it up on Amazon if you want. It's called Visions and Writings, Promise, Hope, and a Future for America. And it's in there about pastors. And that fire. And us being the fire. So that the light, but if we're not pure, purged, cleansed, holy and acceptable, then we're going to be those glory seekers. God isn't going to be able to use us. He doesn't want, no man's going to get the glory out of this. It's not going to be your name, ministry, plastered all over New York Times Square or whatever, New York, whatever it is, Square Times or whatever it is. It's not, that ain't happening, guys. Done. Stick a fork in it. This coronavirus didn't flip the switch. The power was never there. We were disconnected. It just showed that we're disconnected. The electrician came in, which happened to be God, and said, hey, you don't have it. No power. Oh, bark all you want. Can you hear me now? That's what he's saying to the church. And yes, there was some people that still maintained the power. Very few. Not enough, it seemed like to me, but you know, apparently to God it was plenty. That's where the repent comes in. Guys, get it back. Get your first love back. I'm not saying you didn't once have it or, or, you know, I don't know why different people lost it, but they got disconnected. But that's the good news of this message. There's grace. His grace is sufficient. Re turn the power back on, reconnect with God. And you're not going to get it listening to me and YouTube and Facebook and posting bouncing back and forth with posts. That's one of my other messages about wizards that peep in mind. We get sucked into that demonic realm, honestly. I don't even want to do this, but I'm doing it because the Lord told me to use this, use these medias. I don't even really like it. But love you guys. Um, are you, can you hear me now? And you're going to get it at the Mine happens at 5 in the morning or earlier sometimes. It's in the prayer hour. We're going to get it bending a knee, bowing before the Lord, asking God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word for that direction. Can you hear me now? Why did, I'm going to end with this. Why did a lot of the scriptures and parables that Jesus speaks end with let the let the church hear what the spirit is saying to it church are you listening are we too busy talking too busy blabbing too busy on our cell phones too busy in the wizardry which happens to be witchcraft by the way who are the biggest people that we have the beef with right now? The technological gizmo people. Name names, you know. Being censored every corner you turn around. Google's a goofy kind of sounding name even. We've made them gods. We've made money gods. No, we haven't. And God we trust. Look at that weird pyramid on there with the one eye and the masonry stuff and all the other you know people are going to say conspiracy theories and all this other stuff and try the spirit to see if it's the spirit of the lord 
everything right now is about the economy. Trump's going to bring it back. The Democrats are trying to destroy it. Well, of course they are. But Trump's not going to save the day. The economy's toast, guys, honestly. Except for the economy of God. Read Isaiah 9, too. The government rests upon his shoulders. I'm not looking for a handout from the government, the same people that locked us up. Told us to stay home. Those our lives don't matter. Essential workers and all this polarized garbage. And we all can get on our soapbox about that and get angry and mad. And I get sucked into it too, guys. And I apologize. And that's one of the things I need to repent about too. Probably I got sucked into some of the stuff on social media and posted pre post. Convenience. Um, so I'm not, you know, praying. I'd be up at four in the morning praying, but something would, you know, it, I mean, I'm human, dude. There were times when I would get vexed. Sometimes it was from the Holy Ghost, and sometimes it was from Steve. Plenty of room for us all to repent, guys, but he wants to purify his people. So are you in or out? Are you listening or not? Can you hear me now? That's what he's saying to his people. He said that at the marriage supper of the Lamb. The call went out. Come to the wedding. It's prepared. Read it and weep, guys. The church doesn't want to hear this. They want to hear the warm, fuzzy feeling message. And it's great news. I heard it for 40 years, and it's like, great news. Never really got it till about six months ago or a year ago. He sent his servants. They beat him up. He sent his servants again. They killed him. The king became wroth and destroyed him. That's when he went out in the highways and hedges to compel his people to come in so that his wedding could be fulfilled full because he wanted a wedding. What happened to the people and the children of Israel when they complained about the manna from heaven? Guys, no, God's not bipolar. Of course not. He hates sin. Doesn't want anything to do with it, but he's willing to forgive us for it. It's real apparent. The name was Jesus. But are you listening? Can you hear me now? It's not me. That's what God's saying, Jesus is saying, the Holy Ghost is saying, and his word has been saying to the church. Can you hear me now? Love you guys. Um, we are the storm, but we have to choose. Choose ye this day. So you can't make that choice and drag your stuff in with it. It's going to weigh you down and destroy you. Fire's going to have to burn it off and you'll be naked and undone. And still have to repent. Or you can repent and turn. Humble yourselves and listen. Can you hear me now? That's what he wants. No more talk babbling he wants us to listen to what the spirit's saying to the church love you guys it's for all me included i don't get a free pass on this just because i'm ministering the gospel there's that's the whole other message but that's what was prevalent in the american church and i'll end with this they were on a power trip they didn't have any singing stages. You know, why do you have to have a stage in your church? Why do you have to be above everybody? Why do you have to have the big C? Why do you think you've got this? It's in some of my messages. I, I will say this. I kind of hate this. It really grieves me. It bugs me. The messages that people are like, oh, I got a secret. Don't the secret to KFC the recipe, and you don't, not in that boo-boo, stick your head in doo-doo. Well, I forget which one it is. I, I don't think it's Second Peter. Yeah, it is Second Peter, I think. It's on my YouTube feed, but I got a secret revelation. No, you don't. There's no secret revelation. I don't either. This is just what God's showing me, and I gotta be obedient. I gotta get it out, just like this lady that's in move. Spirit Move Ministries, sorry. And all the other ones that are 
getting out the word. And some of them, you know, have certain th certain theme that they're staying on. David Sellers is repentance. It's real, real adamant about it. Better listen to them. Better listen to what the Spirit's saying to the church. Can you hear me now? Others do. Aaron Buttrick, man, he's hitting the streets, guys. Hot. It's hot, hot down here in Texas. And he's out on the street, sometimes 12 hours a day. Brutal. But he's about his father's business. Yes, he is listening. Can you hear me now? Love you guys. How many of y'all are? So I'm not, you know, trying to bust everybody's chops. Those of you are that are listening, do what do what he tells you to do, and let's get this out. Let's take this nation back and quit letting a bunch of yahoos that are driven by demonic spirits take it over. Jeremiah Johnson said this, but you know, I'm, everybody kind of just kind of, I don't know, a lot of people did, they just blew it off like it's, all this stuff that started with all the impeachment process, yay or nay, love it or hate it, or it doesn't matter. But what day did it start on, guys? It had been starting for years, but what day did they really do all that stuff with Congress? Halloween. I think that's a great day when people celebrate demons, demonic. Now people don't even want to hear that anyhow. They think that it's just a funny day, a fun day. You just dress up like, what are you dressing up like, guys? It's not a, it's not a play date. But anyhow, that's, that's a whole other message. It's just an idol, guys, but it's a demonic idol. Can you hear me now? Love you guys. See you soon.